This conversation I had with my friend and another senior over dinner. We are discussing hobbies, and the senior mentions that he likes to play badminton. Why aren't you part of the badminton club if you play every week? Oh, they won't let me in. Why not? Did you ask them? I oh, didn't bother. I know they won't. I'm a bit puzzled, as the badminton club isn't competitive or anything. It's more about learning how to play. Why not? The thing is, back when I was a kid, I had this weirdo for a badminton coach, and she taught me to play badminton completely wrong. Wrong? What did she do? I'm thinking she taught him wrong how to hold the racket? He looked slightly embarrassed. Well, let's just say I only found out last, um, oh wait, two years ago now, that you're only supposed to use one racket in badminton. Me and my friend traded looks, and I say the first thing that comes to mind. What? I'm serious. So, you play by dual wielding rackets? Yes. I've seen him play. He's really good. But, but two rackets? Yeah. I hold the right one in a reverse grip, and I hold the left one normally. Have you tried just using one? Yeah, but I always wind up slapping the shuttlecock with my other hand. You know, muscle memory. Oh yeah, totally understandable. Come to find out, his coach was only a family friend, and she wasn't actually a paid coach. I work at a bakery in Canada. I'm boxing six cupcakes for a customer. And this is what the customer said. Hey, you know what? Just give me two more. I don't like uneven numbers. I look pointedly at the six cupcakes in the box. Um, okay. At our department store, a woman accidentally left her cell phone at our department. And our department's phone rings. Yeah, this is a store. My name is so-and-so. How can I help you? Do you see a black brand phone on your counter? Yes. Do you want to come and pick it up tonight? Yes, please. Great. I'll put it under the counter for you. Could I have a phone number to contact you just in case? Yes. It's 555-5555. Five, 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 five. Perfect. We'll have this for you at the department on the third floor. Okay. By the way, that number that I gave you is the cell phone that you have there. Um, could you please give me a different number just in case? Ah, <sighs> fine. I'll give you my husband's cell phone number. I'm going to a concert with my parents, and my mother is recovering from surgery. She had a broken hand, and she had numerous pins placed in it to stabilize her bones. Her hand was encased in a cast. We go through a metal detector, and naturally, my mother's hand sets off the detector. The security guard pulls out his wand and spot checks my mom. He asked her if she has any metal that she hasn't removed. Yes, I have six pins in my hand. It's to help set the break. You need to remove them. They're implanted into my hand, and they're covered with a solid cast. I can't remove them. You can't go in with metal. You need to remove the metal and go through the scanner again. Are you a surgeon? No. These are surgical pins, and they've been placed into the bones by a surgeon. They're not coming out. You still need to remove the metal. My mother looks like she's about to hit him with a cast. Unless you're willing to pay any medical bills for pulling out the pins, they are not coming out. Finally, the manager comes over, realized the extent of my mom's injury, and told the guard he was an idiot, and let us through. I'm shopping for some lights for my bike. I'm at one of those stores that sells just about everything. After picking up my lights, I spot a water bottle that has clearly been chewed by rats. The transparent cap was about a quarter missing, with teeth marks all around the edge. And there's a few marks on the nozzle itself. I grab the bottle and I bring it up to the register, along with my actual purchases. Hello, I'm going to purchase these today, but I brought this bottle to give it to you because it's been chewed by rats, and I figured you probably want to damage it out. This is a term we often used at my store, taking damaged merchandise out of inventory, but clearly this cashier is not familiar with it. This has been eaten by rats, so I assume you probably don't want to hang it up on the wall. You still want it like this? No, I don't. You guys should probably throw it out. The cashier has a blank expression on her face, and is mostly just staring at me. So I figured it wasn't worth trying to get her to understand what I mean. 
Just ring me up for the lights, okay? Okay. So I paid for it and left. I saw her take the bottle to an area clearly meant for return items that would go back on the shelf. Hopefully, whoever puts those away isn't her. And it has a bit more sense. I ride my bike to school and home every day. One day, I just left school, and I'm riding on a road past the crowds. My high school is located on top of a hill, so I'm going pretty fast. When another student turns, and without looking, steps directly in front of me. I have no time to brake, or swerve, so I plow right into him. We both get up, fortunately uninjured, and get onto the sidewalk. What were you thinking, man? Why didn't you look before crossing the street? Oh, sorry. I didn't hear any cars coming, so I thought it was safe to cross. Oh, sure. That makes sense. Really? Of course not! You just got creamed by a bicycle. Look both ways next time. I work from home, taking calls from customers for a major retailer. I just explained to a customer that she would get an email with a link for her return label. She said she would look for it. I just waited for her to confirm that she got it. After a few minutes, this conversation ensued. I still haven't gotten the email. Hmm, I'm showing here that it was sent. Have you checked your spam folder? Then there was silence. Then I hear a can being opened. I don't know what spam has to do with returning my blouse, but I don't see anything here. I realized right at that moment that the can was actually spam. I mean, seriously, are there really people like that? I work at an assisted living facility. We have a sign-in computer at the front desk. It's fairly new, and while there's a few who don't like it, most people have been agreeable about it. What's this? Where's the book? That's our new sign-in computer. We've done away with the book to save on paper. Well, this doesn't work for me. Give me the book. We don't have it anymore. Here, I'll show you how- Then she cuts me off. No, this doesn't work for me. This repeats over and over, with me offering to show her how to use it. It's very user-friendly, with a super easy interface. And she continues to tell me that it doesn't work for her. Finally, her husband comes in from parking the car. Honey, have you signed us in? No, I'm not going to. This doesn't work for me. Saying this with all the whiny petulance of a small toddler. He rolls his eyes. You're gonna get it, dear. Just do this. He signs them both in while she had a sour, pouty face. Whatever. It doesn't work for me. Then she took the printed label, licked the back, looked super confused when it just fell off onto the floor. The husband and I shared a look of bewilderment and silently shook his head as he peeled the back off and silently stuck it on her. I managed not to laugh until they left. I'm checking out a customer. Over here on the screen, points to the screen, is going to ask you if you would like to apply for a store credit card in order to save some money on your purchase today. Without pressing the button, she says, No thanks. Okay, just press no thanks for me. Okay. The customer hits the yes I accept button, which pulls up the credit card application. I quickly try to close out the application so that I can resume the transaction, but such fast movements on the computer sometimes makes it crash. Okay, it looks like we're going to have to move to another register, since this one's froze up. You know, the computers in the technology store need to work better than they do here. Why did your computers freeze? Honestly, it's because I told you to press no thanks, but you hit the yes I accept button. So I quickly closed the credit card application, which freezes up the computer sometimes. Looking a little embarrassed. Oh, that's okay. We can try it again over here. Okay. I re-ring the transaction. Okay, in that credit card question, just hit no thanks. Okay. And she hits the yes I accept button. All I could do was facepalm. Thank you very much for joining me for this fun with facepalm. Hope you guys enjoyed the pictures so that it didn't hurt your brain too much. I want to give a special thanks to my patrons. You can become a patron for just $1 a month. The link is in the description. Thank you very much, and I will see you again soon with a neckbeard story. I'm looking forward to that. So until next time, just remember, have fun with your failures, or they'll have fun with you. <laughs>